Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Noctua recently released a brand new flagship CPU cooler, the NHU12A for Intel and AMD based machines. We decided that instead of just releasing a review like we usually would, we'd also create a definitive installation guide showing you how to install it on Intel's 20XX sockets and 11.5X sockets, as well as how to install it on AMD's AM4 socket all in one video. You guys have been asking us to cover more air cooling solutions, so I thought that I'd take this opportunity to show you how to install this awesome new cooler from Noctua. Let's do it. Before we begin, I just want to make this super clear. This is for demonstration purposes only. Every single system, motherboard and setup is different. This guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Noctua and HU12A on Intel's desktop and HEDT motherboards, as well as AMD's desktop motherboards as well. Make sure you watch the entire video before asking questions because chances are I'm going to answer the inevitable questions in this video anyways. Let's answer some of those questions right off the bat. No, it's not RGB. Yes, you can install RGB fans on it if you want to. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for the installation is included with the box in the cooler. Yes, it will work with almost every single Intel CPU and motherboard combo you're going to ask about in the comment section from about 2008 up until the foreseeable future. Yes, it will work with whatever AMD AM4 socket CPU and motherboard combo you have. No, this cooler is not compatible with AMD Threadripper. Now that's out of the way, let's start off by seeing what's in the box. All right, let's unbox the Noctua NHU12A. All righty, let's get this guy open. And the first thing we're gonna do is take out the box that has all the accessories and mounting hardware to install this cooler in your system. All right, let's get it open and now see what we got. First thing are the common parts. Now these parts are used in basically every single installation. It's got a splitter, it's got some resistors to make the fan spin slower and some NTH1 thermal compound. Next up is this cool little screwdriver. Now this is quite handy in case you don't have a long enough screwdriver to install the cooler. So yeah, Noctua includes it in the box. Next up is the documentation and installation manuals. Of course, we're not going to be using these because I'm going to be showing you how to install this cooler. Next up is the AM4 mounting brackets. This will allow you to mount the cooler for your AMD installation. And this packet contains the screws and spacers for the AM4 installation. Next up, we're going to take a look at what you get with the Intel part of the kit. Now, the first part here is the back plate for the 11.5X socket. This is required for most Intel installations on an 11.5X socket. So yeah, you will be needing this, but I'll show you how this works when we get to that part of the video. And this is all of the mounting hardware for all Intel sockets, including the 20XX sockets. Rightio, what do we got next? Next up is the actual mounting brackets themselves that mount the cooler to the socket itself. This is also required for all Intel installations. Let's take a look at the cooler itself. Let's uh, take it out of the box, flip it over, lift up the flap and slide her on out. All right. Now the cooler comes pre-installed with two of the new Noctua NFA 12 25 millimeter thick fans. And yeah, here's a little bit of a look at the cold plate. And this is the splitter that comes with it to plug in both of the fans to your CPU fan header on your motherboard. And it comes with one tube of NTH1 thermal compound, some of the best thermal compound on the market. And yes, obviously, the screwdriver. Alrighty, it's installation time. Let's do it. First off, I'm going to show you how to install the Noctua NHU12A on an AMD AM4 based motherboard. If you're interested in any of the Intel installation instructions, there will be a pin post on this video as well as time code in the description. For the AM4 installation, you will need to use the standard back plate that comes with your AM4 motherboard. If you don't have it, I suggest you find one. Now these are all the bits required for the installation guide for AM4 as well. The other spaces will also work, but I'm using these because they look a little bit nicer. Like I mentioned, you're going to need four of the spaces pictured right here. You're also going to need four of the mounting screws so you can connect the brackets to the retention system and also two of the brackets to mount the cooler to the retention system. All right, let's get into the installation. The first thing you want to do is make sure the back plate is installed on the back side of your motherboard and place the four spaces on top, just like so. 
What you want to do is get the mounting bracket and the screws and feed the screws through the holes on the bracket and line them up with the spacers. Just like so. And yeah, tighten it up. Nice and easy and rinse and repeat that for each corner. Make sure you actually have it oriented this way, otherwise the cooler won't fit. And yeah, obviously just do it again on the other side. The next thing you want to do is actually remove the fans from the cooler itself so we can get access to it all when we need to fasten everything up, just like so. Nice and easy, pull those fans right off. And remove the protective plastic cover from the bottom of the cold plate, just like so. Otherwise, you'll be in a world of hate if you leave that on there. What you'll notice is the cooler is actually biased a certain way. You'll notice that the long end of the mounting bracket will actually need to face towards the RAM slots, and this is the case on all installations. And yeah, just um, do a nice little dollop of thermal paste in the center of the chip. Now, there's obviously discussion about the correct way to do this, but this is the way that I would recommend with this cooler in particular. And yeah, you drop the cooler on top of the IHS of the CPU, get your long screwdriver and start tightening it. Now, don't tighten it up all the way, otherwise you won't be able to actually fasten it up. Just do it a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other side. And once they're both actually on the thread of the mounting system, then just tighten them up nice and easy all the way in and you should be good to go. Once you're done with that, we wanna remount the fans onto the tower itself. Just uh, use those little metal clips and pull them over till they cook onto the heatsink. And yeah, you're going to put the rear one back on. And what we're going to do next is actually plug the power in for the fans. This is pretty straightforward. You want to get the two-way splitter, locate the CPU fan header on your motherboard. This will be a PWM connector and just plug the splitter straight in. Nice and easy. And then just plug the fans into the splitter just like so. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're done. The cooler is installed for AM4, pretty straightforward. And yeah, once you're all done, it should look a little something like this. Let's show you how to install the Noctua NHU-12A on Intel 20XX socket setups. This is for Intel HEDT motherboards that have cooler mounting on the socket retention system. For the 20XX mounting installation guide, you're going to need these parts in particular. You've got the two Intel brackets, you've got four bolts and four nuts. Pretty straightforward. Okay, you'll want to grab these bolts just like so, and you'll want to fasten them into the top of the retention system on the 20XX socket. In this case, it's a 2011 V3 motherboard, but it is compatible with all the other HEDT ones. And yeah, just rinse and repeat that process on each of the corners. Now you want to use the Intel mounting brackets just like so, and get those nuts because we're going to tighten this guy right up. First thing you want to do is drop them onto each of the sides. You can actually install this cooler in the other orientation if you like, but the RAM clearance will be a little bit of an issue, but it is possible. And yeah, what you want to do is just rinse and repeat that process until the mounting brackets are done all the way. Then you want to remove the fans from the tower, just like so. And remove the plastic protective cover on the bottom of the cold plate, just like so. Otherwise, uh, yeah, the insulation won't go well. And now we're going to apply some thermal paste. This is a way that I have used it for a very long time. I actually draw like a bit of a Y shape. It is not the same way that everyone else will do it. You'll, everyone else will have a different way of, of applying this. This is the way that I, I recommend doing it. I'll show a spread of the thermal paste later as well so you can see how well it works. And drop the cooler onto the IHS just like so and tighten up each side. Now, like I said previously in the AM4 guide, just do it up a little bit and then do the other side up as well. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard for you to tighten up the whole retention system. And just rinse and repeat and get each side in nice and tight. And what you want to do is mount the fans back to the tower just like so. Nice and easy. Just use the metal clips that come with it. And we'll do that process on the back side of the cooler as well. Nice and easy. And the next part is we're going to hook up the power for the fans. What you want to do is locate this Y splitter cable. And then the next thing we're going to do is find the CPU fan header on the motherboard which in this case is here, and we're going to plug the splitter cable in just like so, nice and easy, and then plug in the fan power, just like that. And yeah, we're 
basically pretty much done. And uh, yeah, if all goes to plan, it should look a little something like this. I also mentioned earlier in the guide that I'll show you the spread from my thermal paste application method and this is the spread that you get and as you can see it is quite consistent. Obviously the bit that looks like cracks is when the cooler is actually lifted off the IHS but yeah it's a very good way of doing it. Let's show you how to install the Noctua NHU12A on Intel 11 5X socket setups. This is for Intel desktop boards from around 2008 until the foreseeable future. This is the hardware that you're going to need for the 11.5x installation. Uh, there's quite a few little bits and we're going to go through all of them right about now. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is four of the thumb nuts. The next thing you're going to need is the Intel mounting brackets. You're going to need four of these spaces. They are required for this type of installation. You're also going to need this backplate. Now this backplate actually mounts the cooler to the motherboard. There's no mounting system on these motherboards typically. And yeah, it looks a little something like this. Now I'm gonna show you the correct way to do this so you don't mess up. So what you'll notice is the backing plate will actually only install one way into the motherboard. You'll notice that it's got cutouts and holes on the back so it actually fits nice and flush. If you do happen to put it in the wrong way, I'm going to show you what will happen. It won't fit and it won't line up and it'll be a little bit rocky, just like that. And yeah, you won't, you won't be able to mount the cooler, it just won't work. So I recommend just taking a little bit of time and making sure that this back plate is installed the correct way from the get go. All right, let's grab the spacers, let's grab those thumb nuts, and let's grab those brackets. And I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. Here we go. Drop the four spacers onto the bolts that are coming out through the top of your board with the back plate, just like so. And yeah, do that for every corner, otherwise it won't work. And what you wanna do is lower the bracket onto those bolts just like so. And like I mentioned, you can actually mount the cooler to go horizontally as well, but uh, it's gonna give you ram clearance issues, but it is possible and yeah Just get those nuts and put them on every corner just like so nice and easy and then remove the fans from the tower once again Well, actually just remove the fans from the tower just like that <laughs> Radio the next thing we're gonna do is pull off the plastic protective part of the bottom of the cold plate And we're gonna apply some thermal paste this is the way that I would recommend to apply the thermal paste with 11.5x chips. Just needs a small little dollop in the middle and it should spread nice and evenly and lower the cooler onto the IHS of the CPU. And tighten up just a little bit on one side of the cooler, go to the other side of the cooler, do it up a little bit as well, and just rinse and repeat that process until everything is nice and tight. Alrighty. Now what you want to do is put the fans back onto the tower of the cooler, just like so, and you want to do that for both sides of the cooler as well, so you get maximum airflow, just like that. Ooh, spin the fan, all right. And locate the CPU fan header on the motherboard, get the two-way Y splitter cable, which is this guy right here, and then plug that into the CPU fan header, which is located right here on this motherboard. Plug it in, Nick. You got it? Yep, okay, all right, we're in. And plug the fans into the splitter, just like so. Nice and easy. And yeah, this cooler is very, very easy to install. And this is what it should look like installed on your 11 5X Intel motherboard. Okay. I think I covered pretty much every single thing in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to head on over to our Discord or drop a comment down below. Make sure you read the comment section because chances are myself or someone else would have already answered your question. Also, yeah, make sure that you take that into consideration before you ask any questions. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. And tell us what you didn't like about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek, and hopefully today with this video, we helped you figure out how to install this cooler. Thanks for watching.